we into the fourth passage in our The Gospel Matters series. And in this section, we're looking at what it means for us to be servants. This passage says, Therefore the end of all things is near. Therefore be alert and of sober mind so that you can pray. And so I really do encourage you before you dig into this passage further to take some time to pray. Pray that God would help you to understand his word, uh, that he would help you to know how best to teach this to others. And take some time to read through the passage for yourself, just to familiarize yourself with what Peter is saying in this section. And as always, I'm going to dig in and just show you some of the things that I've seen. For a little bit of context, uh, this Peter was one of Jesus' disciples. And so he would have been around uh, in the story that happens in Mark 10, uh, verse 35 to 45. In that story, two of Jesus' disciples wanted to be at Jesus' left and right in glory, in those places of honor. And Jesus used that as an opportunity to teach them on the nature of his kingdom. And ultimately, that for those who want to be great in the kingdom of God, are to be the servants of all. Where in verse 43, he says, Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man, that's Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So contextually, as Peter would have been thinking about what it means to be servants, it would have been modeled on our Lord Jesus, who is the ultimate example of a servant king. And in this section, he says, the end of all things is near. So he starts the section by giving us uh, an eternal focus uh, to be expectant. Jesus could return at any moment. And because that is true, it says, therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you can pray. So Jesus could come back at any time. Peter was writing to Christians who were suffering because of their trust in Jesus. Uh, he wanted them As we see in chapter 2, he says, Live such good lives among the pagans, that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. And now he says, the end of all things is near. The time when Jesus visits us, comes again, is coming soon. Therefore, be careful how you live. And as servants, our service is modeled on Jesus. It's motivated by eternity, and it starts in prayer. And again, this would have been something that, that Peter would have seen. In Mark chapter 1, we see Jesus early in the morning going to pray. And Peter says, if we want to serve right, that's where we need to start. And he says, above all, love each other deeply. In New Testament letters, it's worth looking out for the imperatives, the verbs that are commands. And we've got two imperatives in this section. The imperatives are be alert and be sober-minded. So all of the love and all of the service flow from our self-control, our alertness and our sober-mindedness, which comes from the urgency that the end is near. So devote yourselves to prayer and maximize your usefulness in God's kingdom. And if we want to do that, we need to be alert and sober-minded. Then he says, and love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Now, what does that mean? Someone has said that if sin is like a fire burning, looking to destroy, our love is the thing that smothers that sin, that doesn't allow it to linger for very long. So our love needs to cover over a multitude of sins. So this isn't talking about the work of redemption in any way to pay for sins, Jesus has done that alone. We are a redeemed people only because of Jesus. But as a redeemed people, we should be quick to forgive. And so our love should cover over a multitude of sins, not letting uh, sin linger long in our church family. And one way to show this deep love is to offer hospitality to one another. There's a whole lot of one another and each other statements in this section. So love one another, show hospitality to one another, serve others. 
And one way to love each other deeply is to offer hospitality. That is opening up our homes so that others can walk into our chaos. We're really sharing life deeply. And it says without grumbling. So it's not a thing that we are doing grumpily, but we are joyfully opening our homes, loving each other well. It's one, it's one way to serve. So our service is modeled on Jesus, our servant king. It's motivated by eternity. It starts in prayer. It is marked by love. And then it is seen in both word and deed. We see a few of these statements. Each of you, anyone, anyone. So Peter is speaking to uh, different kinds of people. And here he focuses in specifically on different kinds of service. And he says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. We see in this section, we've got God's grace, the very words of God, with the strength God provides so that God may be praised and God may be glorified. So we are to serve as stewards of God's grace, speaking the very words of God. With the strength, serving with the strength God provides, all so that God may be praised. The word here for being faithful stewards is the household manager or the household servant. So it is a picture of humility, willingness, being willing to serve no matter what situation it is. And that's what we are called to as servants, as a redeemed family of servants. We, are, we should be willing to serve in whatever way possible. If anyone speaks, they should speak the very words of God. Now this isn't only talking about those who speak as in preachers. It's anybody who speaks gospel truth. Wherever we have opportunity, remember that you are speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. So we don't do any of this in our own strength. And then we're given a reason over here, so that... It's always worth looking out for words like therefore and so that. So the therefore links with what's come before. The so that is a response to what's come before. So that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So this passage is helping us to understand what it means to be servants. All of us are called to be servants. If we are disciples of Jesus, we are following in his example. And as Jesus said, even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And because the Son of Man is coming again soon, we are to be alert and sober-minded, loving each other, being prayerful, being hospitable, serving in whatever way we are able, all so that God may be praised. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So I really do encourage you as you dig into this passage further to delight in these truths for yourself. To remember that we are called to serve, but we do it with a prayerful dependence. We do it as stewards of God's grace, speaking God's word, strengthened by God's power, all for God's glory. And we should see it as a great privilege that we get to serve in response to how we have been served by Jesus, our servant king. As you dig into this further, it's worth just thinking in your context, what are specific areas in which you can serve? What are ways in which your group can serve together, serve in the church, serve out in the community, serving like Jesus, our servant king? And as individuals and as a group, let's be praying that we would indeed be alert and sober-minded remembering that Jesus is coming again, modeling our service on Jesus, and then doing everything in service so that God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Well, God bless as you dig in further and as you prepare to teach this to others.